Hey guys, this is Lop here, and I'm bringing you another video. This one's going to be about TVT and specifically focus on a mech opening that's safe and will allow you to get to the late game. So I went gas first in this build. I got it on 11, and then I got my barracks on 13. And as soon as my barrack finishes, I get a factory straight away. And directly after I get the factory, I get the orbital. Normally the orbital would come a little bit earlier, but at the very beginning of this game I accidentally misclicked my workers for about one or two seconds, and that cost me 50 minerals. Uh, as you can see here, my orbital is slightly delayed. So right on 16 food, I'm going to get a supply depot and a tech lab on my barracks. And you can see he's going as standard racks, gas, and then factory. So my factory is going to be ahead of his by quite a bit. Okay, so as soon as your factory finishes, switch it with the barracks. And get a Hellion immediately. As soon as you have the gas, go ahead and get blue flame as well. So with this first Hellion, you're going to want to clear out the watchtowers, scout for any weird cheeses, all that good stuff. So there's a few things I want to note about this build. A few rules you want to go by. Um... One, have about two factories per an extra base. So every extra base you get, add on one factory with the tech lab, one factory with your reactor. Um, so if you have two bases, you're going to have three factories. If you have three bases, you're going to have five factories, and so forth. I figure that's right about the number you need. If you're going to be upgrading, adding turrets, supply depots, vikings, everything together, it's only going to be about two factories for a base. So I added my command center on 24 food, and here's a couple of important timings. By the way, add your second gas right around 28. You want to scan his base at around 6 minutes and 20 seconds. I make a mistake this game, and I scan it at, I believe, around 6 minutes 45 seconds, maybe 6.50 which is too late. The reason is if you see him going banshees or you have any kind of sign he's going banshees with your scan you're gonna wanna immediately get an engineering bay and your viking. The reason is if he gets two cloaked banshees in your base and you don't have turrets um, or a raven you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble because just scans alone are not enough to deal with cloaked banshees. So as you see here, he's going a Banshee with no cloak, and I scanned it a little bit late. Yeah, as you can see, I scanned it about 6.54 or so there. And I'm going to put up my Engineering Bay and get my Viking, but I should have been doing this uh, maybe 20 seconds ago. So the CC finishes up, and I go ahead and put my Orbital down. And I add on two factories. Now here's why this is annoying. Since my viking and turrets are going to be just a little bit late, he's going to go ahead and delay these factories by quite a bit, way more than I would like. Now clearly his micro isn't the best, or he could have took out uh, a little bit more there. And there we go. And I think that was actually a pretty even trade. Um, he invested into a banshee and... It only got a few kills. I think his Banshee was worth it, but I don't think it put me behind greatly or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and move out my command center, and I'm still building Hellions as of right now. Uh, and I really like his build. He's actually going Banshee and a Reactor Hellions. Now the problem with this is he does not apply any pressure with them. If you're going to build this many Hellions early on, I believe you should apply some pressure. You're going to have map control. He's probably going to have less Hellions than you if he's not doing the same thing. And you should really feel free to go ahead and push in at that point. At the very least, he should be poking with them a little bit. So here my factories are almost done. I want to get a reactor on one and a tech lab on the other. And I should start pumping tanks pretty soon here. Yep, there we go. I'm getting tanks in Siege. Uh, I should take these two gases pretty soon. There we go. And I'm going to poke with these and see that he's going a large amount of Hellions and just kind of back off. 
So here comes out my Viking and my Raven. And here I go. Now the reason I get the Raven is not just Cloak Banshees, is if we have any Viking Wars later on, it's going to help a lot versus that. Uh, points Defense Drone is great in Viking Wars. Now here's the big key of this build. You're going to want air superiority at all times. If you ever lose it in any kind of engagement, it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, to get it back without getting behind. And as you'll see in this game, uh, he already has a food advantage on me. Um, even though he's not spending his minerals very well, he still has a lot more supply. A lot of it's just due to the amount of Hellions he has. And I should start Viking production pretty soon here. So the idea is here is I'm taking my third base a little bit before I plan to actually float it out just so I can saturate this base here and get get some more mules going. So I have three tanks, Diz one, and he has a bunch of Hellions, which gives us a little bit of a supply advantage here. So you can see our third bases are coming up pretty close to the same time. And I am going to speed up a little bit just because YouTube only allows 10 minute videos unless you're a YouTube partner. I don't know any way around that currently. If anybody knows, uh, shoot me a message in my inbox or a comment or something like that. I don't really think there's a way, but if there is, I'd love to know. So he's going to go ahead and do a push. And here's where you're going to see my air superiority come into big play. So he's going to siege up on the low ground here but the problem is is I'm gonna have air dominance and he's not gonna be able to really stop my tanks from pushing on his. Now I do make a bad siege here and a little bit of miss micro but it's not gonna matter with my air control. Could have probably got that tank if he focus fired. He definitely could have got that tank if he focus fired. So I'm going to go ahead and land on these tanks. Um, he wasted a scan there. No big deal. And there we go. I got three free tanks. And I only lost two Vikings. It's well worth it. And I have air control. And he's making no attempt to get it. Yeah, he has no intentions to get air control right now. And part of that reason is, is once you get behind, it's just so hard to catch up. Once you get behind in air control, it's just... It feels almost impossible to get back into it. So, I'm going to take my third and make a little push here. And as you can see, he still has the supply advantage. It's 124 food to 111. The problem is he doesn't have air control. So when you're playing this build, I would really focus on this air control. Not only does it allow you to stop drop ships and... And, uh spot for your tanks it gives you the ability to harass with your vikings you know maybe you can go land at a base and kill a few SCVs. maybe you can land on top of his tanks they have quite a bit of utility if he's going gear bio you don't really need any vikings but other than that you should, you should always have vikings it even lets you set up into the late game a little bit for example if i threw a banshee in here I would automatically win the game with these. I mean, all these tanks would die. No problem. Now, it's kind of unfortunate here. I did a little turret break from my Raven, and he unseeded the same time I did it. So, look at this advantage he has 143 food to 122. He has more tanks. And I believe he has more Hellions. Yeah, he does have more Hellions. Now, I actually do have a now that a few more have arrived. And he's using up all his scans. In fact, he has no scans on any of his bases. So he's forced right now. He realizes that I'm going to push up until I'm all the way up at his natural, and he's not going to be able to scan for that entire duration. So his choice right now is to go ahead and push, try and push me out, or 
I mean, he can try and turtle up a little bit more. But eventually, his scans are going to run out, and I'm going to push up into his natural. So as you see, he's going to try and push out here, and I'm pretty much just going to crush it. And he's going to Well, apparently he doesn't GG. Um, he says he's losing to more cheese. So, yeah, I guess do this build if you want to cheese. But anyways, this is a build that will let, allow you to get into the late game. Um, it will allow you to have a build that you can practice and use consistently and get used to and better with, as opposed to just trying random things. So the main things to note is keep air control, two factories per an extra base, one with reactor, one with tech lab and keep your upgrades going other than that just like subscribe favorite uh, all that good stuff comment throw me a message whatever you like if you'd like to support me making these videos you can visit www.christmas-electronics.com um, it's a site I recently opened up it offers six featured items of all kinds of popular electronics at a pretty cheap price so if you're looking to get a good deal and also support me at the same time, um, go ahead and check that site out. I'm planning on doing some kind of sponsored uh, little event soon, most likely for Platinum players. Uh, it's probably going to be like a $30 prize tournament or something of the sorts, just to spark a little bit of healthy, friendly competition. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and have a good day.